لما يا مخلوق آثرت الجحود كنت معدوما فمن أين الوجود آهي الصدفة أم رب ودود آهي الصدفة أم رب ودود قبله في الكون من بعده الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome again, my dear beloved brothers, my dear sisters, my dear viewers, to another one of our wonderful discourses on the tafsir and commentary of the Holy Quran. And we, as we begin our daras and our classes, our discourse today, we would like to welcome you and greet you with the greeting of peace by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, the blessings, and the mercy of Allah be with each and every one of you. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given us the tawfiq and the ability to uh, complete many surahs of the Holy Quran and we are actually going on from verse to verse and surah to surah and inshallah until we reach the end and I know many of you are joining us via our live stream and also through our programs that are conducted, the, conducted via the TIN. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for your attentive viewing and listening. And alhamdulillah, it is a, a very great, uh, let's say, kindness from Allah that Allah has allowed us this opportunity to come and do the dars over here and also for you to sit back in the comfort of your homes and follow through with the understanding of the Holy Quran. As I always say, the Holy Quran is our book the revealed book, the greatest of all the revealed books on the face of dirt. It's a book of guidance. It is the book of guidance for us. And we must take the time to understand the meaning and the message of the Holy Quran and what are the commands of Allah in it. What are the teachings and the lessons uh, that there are in the Holy Quran for us. So we had started Surah Al-Hujarat, a very beautiful surah. And we have already completed 10 verses, the first 10 verses of the surah. The last verse we discussed was a very beautiful verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about uh, the unity and the brotherhood of the Muslim ummah. And that is something we must never forget that Allah has joined us. Allah has connected us in, and made us into one brotherhood, the ummah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ummatul Muslima, the Muslim Ummah, which is actually one brotherhood. So we continue from that verse, which, and we move on to verse 11, very beautiful verse with uh, certain teachings that are connected to our social conduct. And that is a very beautiful, uh, let's say, a beautiful thing about the Holy Quran where each and every aspect of the, the lives of men, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala touches on. When you look at an individual and you look at his whole life, he is or will be engaged in many different things. You will have uh, children, you will have parents, you will have the role of a mother, the role of a father, the role of children. Then you are growing up in a society, that society might be an Islamic society, might, it might be uh, a non-Muslim society, and a society in which, uh, you know, there is no Islam. And the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sufficient as a model for us because he grew up in an environment like that. He grew up in, an, in a hostile environment, you know, and he was not influenced by the negatives of the community. Just imagine, think about how he grew up surround him who was shirk. shirk. Actually, he grew up in, uh, in an ocean of darkness, the darkness of kufr, of disbelief, the darkness of shirk, growing up in an environment where fighting, murder, killing, these things were the order of the day. Uh, you know, illicit relationship, zina, fornication, adultery, consuming, intoxicants, and all sorts of things were, were actually around him. He grew up in that environment. Yet, the goodness that he had in himself and the strength that he had within himself, he worked hard to change that environment rather than allow the, allowing himself to be changed by that environment. And in a short space of time of 23 years of prophethood, he was able to change drastically the entire environment 
of Mecca and Medina and all the surrounding territories and where actually he turned these people from enemies and they became brothers to each other. He eradicated every type of ill, vice, acts of transgression, you know, fighting, war, tribal wars, everything he eradicated, subhanAllah. Started as one person with that determination, with that focus on the writing, and he kept on moving on from one strength to another strength until at the end of the period of uh, 23 years of Nabuwat and Prophethood, Alhamdulillah, the entire environment was changed. So, therefore, Islam teaches us, Allah teaches us in these verses, uh, which teaches us about our social conduct how we are to live with each other. And that's something that is lacking in our society. Uh, this is why sometimes it is very difficult, you know, when we see um, people, I mean, difficult to see people not living in a good manner. We live in a community. We need to know how to live in a community. Remember, we have rights over others and others have rights over us. We live with our immediate family. We live with our extended family. We live with people who might be our neighbors, people who are strangers, people who are known to be our brothers, our sisters in Islam, in faith. We all gather together in a masjid. We work together. We do things together. Unless and until we don't know how to interact with each other, how to overlook, how to be kind, how to be compassionate, how not to get into certain things, then if we don't learn these things, then living together will be difficult. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us some beautiful guidelines, instructions in this verse here and the, verse, the verses that are coming afterwards in Surah Al-Hujra. In this verse, which is verse 11, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that's verse 11 of Surah Al-Hujrat, Allah says, O oh, you who believe, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, he says, let not a group scoff at another group. Let not a group scoff at another group to look down upon, to laugh at, to ridicule. It may be that the latter are better than the former. Subhanallah. Nor let some women scoff at other women. It may be that the latter are better than the former. Nor defame one another. Nor insult one another by nicknames. How bad is it? How bad it is to insult one's brother after having feet. And whosoever does not repent, that then such are indeed a volumon. Then such are indeed a volumon. That is, they are wrongdoers, etc. A very beautiful eye in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid out some prohibitions. And in the Arabic, it states for those of you who follow in the Arabic Quran or even in the translation of your Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahi rahman rahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu O those who believe La yaskhar qawmum min qawm let not some people, you know, it is translated as a group, but qawm basically refers to some people. It can be one, two, three. It can be a whole group and a whole organization. You know, so qawm, qawm is translated even as a nation. So Allah is telling us, the believers, He is addressing us. Or oh, those who believe, la yaskhar qawmum min qawm. Let not some people or a group, let not some people from among you, and Allah is speaking to the believers, you and I, let not some of you scoff at, let not some of you look down upon, let not some of you laugh at others. No, this is not permissible. Laughing at a person, putting the other person down, looking at him, you know, as he's nothing, belittling the person, making Mockery out of the person. All these are prohibited. The word that is used here is la yaskhar. Yaskhar from the word sakhar. Sakhara yaskhar or sakhar. Sukhriya, which is the basar. Sukhriya is the original word. Sukhriya means to make fun of somebody. To laugh at somebody, you know, making fun out of the person. To ridicule somebody. 
put down the person. So the first command here Allah is given to us with respect to how we behave with each other and how we conduct ourselves with each other, whether it is between a husband and a wife. A, a wife should not do that to the husband, and a husband should not do that. You should not mock a person. You should make, not make fun of each other. No, it, it actually is going to create a lot of problems in, the, in your relationship. Parents and children, brothers and sisters among themselves, people in the community, people in your workplace, wherever you are, you should never do this. This is not good. You are mocking other people. It creates a lot of, uh, you know, difficulties for people. Then Allah says, one of the reasons, one of the reasons is this, Asa, perhaps, translated as, it may be, you know, the Arabic language, obviously, in the English translations, uh, the translators try to get the closest word to the Arabic, but the Arabic word has a much deeper meaning, subhanAllah, and if you understand this is why sometimes i uh, retain the, the arabic words and then explain it for us to understand what really is the message behind these words allah has revealed the quran in the arabic language the arabic language is a complete perfect so comprehensive language allah says Asa, translated as maybe it may be meaning perhaps it is highly possible likely it may happen that an yakunu khayra minhum that the latter an yakunu referring to these people the pronoun goes back to the closest noun so the people laughed at and the people who were mocked the people who were scoffed at it is possible that these people who were laughed at they are far better than the ones who were mocking them who were laughing at them you know so some people look down upon others they criticize them, they condemn them, they put them down, they laugh at them, make a mockery out of them, tell people about them. And those people, you know, poor thing, what they're going to do, they say, okay, well, we don't have, we don't have any way of recourse, we cannot do anything, we are weak, we, okay, we don't, so they take it. Allah says, very likely it may happen that these people who are laughed at, they are in the sight of Allah far better. Or they may become better than you right here on the face of the earth. Because of your actions, Allah does not love injustice. Allah does not love unfairness at all. Because of your actions of laughing and putting on other people, it may happen that Allah will bring this situation to you. As it is normally said, what you do to others, others will do the same to you. That's why it is normally said, do, other, do unto others as you will like others do to you, subhanAllah. You don't want people to treat you bad, but don't do it to other people. You don't want people to laugh you down, as we say in Sri language, laugh you down, put you down, make a mockery of you. Why do it to others? It's as simple as that. So Allah says, perhaps it is likely, it may happen that these people who are laughed at, they are far better than the, the mockers, the ones, who, those who are laughing. Then Allah makes specific mention to women. Perhaps it is something that women get involved in. Allah says, وَلَا نِسَاءٌ مِّن نِسَاءٌ And let not some woman or woman, let not woman laugh at other women. Put down other women you know, scoff at, make fun and mockery of other women. Women should not do that. Obviously, on the, the address of Ya Ayyuhalladheena Amanu, everybody falls into, into that. Male and female, young and old, everybody falls into that. But by highlighting this specifically, because if women fall, you know, the category of women, uh, you know, the gender of women, they fall into the words, yeah, you have Levina, Amano, those who believe, then it means it's already addressed. So why, why is it mentioned here? That is special. That is for actually special attention is given there to that. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes special mention of women here. After saying, Ya Yuhaladina Amanu, or those who believe, and in that statement, everybody will fall in, as I said male and female, here Allah says, Wala nisa, um min nisa. Allahu Akbar. 
and women must not laugh at women. Women may, must not look down upon women. Women must not put them down and look down upon them as they are nothing or make fun and mockery of them. They must not do that. Allah says, why? Perhaps it is likely, it may be, as the translation goes, that those women who are laughed at, those women who are scoffed at and mocked, they are far better than the mockers themselves. They are far better than those who mock them. And as I said before, Allah does not love to see people treating others unfairly. You, you, subhanallah, you are not better than another person, but you are putting that person down. You are making a mockery out of the person, subhanallah. Na'uzu billah, this is wrong, totally wrong. Allah may bring that same situation upon you where other people will mock you and other people will laugh at you. We have to actually pray to Allah that if you are doing that, that the same is not done to you. But a very, very beautiful ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. Yeah, this, this is the beginning of the verse here. Yeah. So as it states here in the above verse, the commentary, it starts, in the above verse, Allah has outlined a number of important and beautiful traits that are connected to the social conduct of the believers. How do we, how do we behave with each other? That's a very, very important thing, my, believe, my beloved brothers and sisters. We need to learn that and we need to do the correcting. And if we do the correcting and we know how to behave with each other, then subhanAllah, this will always bring about unity and harmony and goodness among people. You know, you know how to respond, you know when to respond, you know what words to use, subhanAllah. You are conscious of not, not offending anybody. You do not try to become worked up for something that is nothing, subhanAllah. You know, when you look at it, you become worked up for something and then you think about it and say, why was I worked up so, you know, and it's really absolutely nothing. So it all depends of, on our behavior, our response, how we interact. What we say, how we do, subhanallah. That is very important. So it states at the beginning of the verse, Allah says, O you, o you who believe, O the believers, let not a group scoff at another group. It may be that the latter are better than the former. Here, Allah has prohibited the believers from mocking or ridiculing one another. It's not permissible to mock another believer or ridicule another believer. A believer must not make fun of or belittle another believer. He should not humiliate him nor make him an object of mockery and scorn and must not laugh at him in derision. Subhanallah. Looking down upon him in scorn. That is very, very important for us to know. That those are the, some of the commentaries given by the greatest mufassirin of that ayah, when Allah says, let not a group scoff at another group. Remember, Allah addresses the believers. So Allah is saying that a believer, so scoff at, you make a mockery of, don't make a mockery of another believer. Don't make fun of another believer. Don't ridicule another believer. Don't uh, make up jokes and make up things to, and to say it in front of people that when you say it, they laugh at him. He feels embarrassed. He feels humiliated. You cannot do that as a Muslim. We must know that. You know, people may do it and people think it's normal. They do it regularly, do it on a daily basis. They are not, they are not concerned about how that person feels. This person becomes a laughing stock. Everybody sees him, they laugh at him, they make fun. Just think about it. If somebody does that to you, how would you feel? Whether it's a family member, whether it's a friend, whether it's a co-worker, whether it's wherever you are, people behave like that towards. How would you feel? So we must never do it to other people. Think about the feelings of other people. Think about the heart of the people. They have hearts also. We have a heart. We know how it feels when people hurt us, when people say offensive things. We know that. So we must never do that as Muslims. And Allah is ordering us. He says, don't do that. That if we do that, then we are accountable to Allah. And Allah will bring situations upon us that we will be humiliated in front of the very people 
that we used to humiliate and we used to ridicule. So a believer must never, never make fun of another believer. We must never belittle him. Istisgaruhu, yani consider him to be a nothing, low, inferior, whether it is in family rank, whether it is in social standing, financial status, or whatever it is. We must never consider him sagheer, low. And we must never ever humiliate him and make him an object of mockery to say things that actually people are always laughing at him, you know, or people scorn him, subhanAllah. You look at him with an inferior eye, you know, and must not laugh at him in derision. Mocking others, as it states here, mocking others is a sign of pride and arrogance. Since the person who mocks considers himself to be better than others. Think about it. Why would you mock another person? You are mocking another person. You think yourself to be better than the other person. You are getting others to laugh and laugh him down as we say in our language. It is narrated in a hadith that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, pride and arrogance is to disregard the truth and to belittle and despise people. This is takabbur. Al-kibru batarul haq the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Pride is to disregard, turn away from the truth, not recognizing the truth, denying the truth. And it is waghamsul nas, and it is to what? Belittle people, look down upon them, despise them. So, so therefore, you know, the hadith says that that person who has an atom's weight of pride and arrogance in his heart, he will not enter Jannah. So we know about the, the severity of pride in the heart. And what is pride? A part of that pride and arrogance is this. One is that you show total disregard to the truth. That has a lot of meaning. That, for example, as Muslims, we always hear that which is good. We hear what is haq, what is the truth. We hear it whether it's a khutbah we go to or whether it's a program like this, whether we play a CD or something. You know, we are always in some situation where we are getting the teachings of Islam. And some of these teachings that we get, it tells us what is the truth about something. And although that is the truth, because of the fact that that may not be, it may go well with us because we are really doing the very thing that we are hearing about that it is haram. We show total disregard to what is being said. We turn a blind eye to that which is the haq and which is the truth. We don't even be attentive to what is being said from the Quran or from the ahadith or from the teachings of Islam. And uh, we disregard it. That's a sign of pride and arrogance. Because if Allah is speaking to you, who are you to turn away from the words and the commands of Allah? You think you are bigger than Allah. The Quran is being uh, uh, ex explain to you the Quranic teachings and the commands are being uh, shared with you yani the ilm and the knowledge whether it is in this class or any other place as I said we often go to the khutbahs we hear khutbahs we go to programs we go to lectures we listen to these things you know and we hear that which is the truth and yet we don't make an effort to change ourselves in the direction of the truth or we yet we are not at some sometimes ready to listen and make some improvement in ourselves by leaving off that which we know is wrong sinful and it is haram so what we actually do is show total disregard to what the truth is but haq the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he said that is a sign of pride. That is a sign that you have pride in you. That if Allah, who is your Lord, your Rabb, your Creator, He tells you something and you don't want to comply and you don't want to pay attention, then it seems that you are bigger than Him. When the Messenger of Allah, who is so great, subhanAllah, Allah has blessed him. You, you as a Muslim, you have taken him as your Nabi and your Rasul. You have agreed by saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. You have agreed to follow him. And yet, notwithstanding that, you just want to turn a blind eye to his teachings. That's a sign of takabur. That's a sign of pride. That's the first part. And the second part, To put down people. 
Subhanallah. To consider them haqir, you know, low, base, mean. To look down upon them as being inferior. They are not, you know, they are not, uh, com you know, in, in, in an equal status and rank with you. You are higher than them. They are lower, you know, and that those type of thoughts enter. Then you are put in, you are despising people and belittling people. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when you do that, it means you have pride. You have arrogance. And he says, a person with an atom's weight of pride and arrogance will not enter into Jannah. Hadith recorded by Imam Muslim. In another hadith, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala narrated that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not quarrel with your brother. It is possible that you may have a little cross talk. You may have a little misunderstanding, but that doesn't mean you're going to quarrel with the person. No, don't quarrel. It brings about enmity. Do not mock him, Allahu Akbar. Do not mock him. Make fun of him. Joke excessively with him because you make, you make the wrong joke. You may continue to make joke with him. You think it's a joke, but he sees it as being serious. So do not mock him make fun of him or joke excessively with him and do not make a promise to him that you cannot fulfill. Beautiful hadith recorded by Imam Tirmizi. Do not make a promise to him that you cannot fulfill. It means to anybody. If you know you cannot fulfill a promise, then don't make it to him. Why are you deceiving the person? Sometimes people give others their word. Sometimes you, you want to do something or you want a little help or you want somebody to help you with some situation and you, they come to you and you say, yeah, don't worry, I'll do it. I will do it for you, don't worry. Okay, uh, give me some time. And as we say in Trini language, you set up the person. They are counting on you. They are looking towards you. Every time they call, you tell them, uh, don't, don't worry, I'll do it, I'll do it. You know, don't worry. And, and, and actually, time passes and you don't do it. So, very beautiful teaching. If you know you cannot do something for a person, don't give him your word. Don't make a promise which you know you can't keep. It's as simple as that. If he's asking to do something, you, if he's asking you to help him, or a, a woman is asking a, another sister to help her with something, you know, it doesn't have to be finance. It might be with a situation. It might be with some sort of thing. You know, and you ask for some help in some way or the other. You know, uh, it's, it's not follows upon you at times to actually do it. If you can't, you can excuse yourself and say, I really don't have the time or I, I'm not in a position to help you. The person will understand. But for now, you to actually give your word, kind of make a promise and not keep it. Now, Zabila, you're really setting up that person. You are deceiving the person. And when you know you would not do it, and still you give your word and you make a promise, that is a big lie. You are lying to the person. You may not be accountable to the person. You tell yourself, well, if I don't do it, what will he do? The thing we have to ask ourselves, what will Allah do? Because that's a grave sin we are committing to the person. Deceiving, that's deception. And then also lying. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hadith to the, the effect, Man gharrana or man ghashana falaysa minna. Whosoever deceives us. It means when a Muslim deceives another Muslim, he's not a believer. He's not fit to be a believer if you can go about deceiving other people. So therefore, beautiful tradition. In another hadith, Wathila bin al-Asqa radiallahu ta'ala narrates, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Do not rejoice over the misfortune of your brother. SubhanAllah, what a beautiful tradition. Do not rejoice over the misfortune of your brother, lest Allah have mercy upon him and afflict you with trials. SubhanAllah. You know, people have the tendency, now Zubillah, may Allah protect us from that. People have the tendency of always rejoicing and being happy when others are in trouble. Now, this is not belief. This is never a sign and will never be and can never be a sign of a believer. You know, okay, you may have a difference with a person. Temporarily, you may not be on speaking terms as we say. But that doesn't mean that if he's in trouble, you become happy. 
if he got in an accident, you know what people say, you know what people say over here in Trinidad. If you hear somebody with whom you were not on speaking terms, or you had a little squabble, or you had a little knickknack, or you had a little fight with words or so, and you are not on speaking terms, if he gets in trouble, you say it's good for him. Na'uzubillah. How can you do that? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, never rejoice over the misfortune of the, a person. You may not like him or her as a sister, but are you really happy that a person is going through difficulties and sufferings in his life? How can you be a Muslim and still feel that way when another Muslim is suffering? That is no sign of Iman. Absolutely no sign of Iman. You see, we fail to realize what Iman does to us. Iman is a brilliant light in our heart that actually removes every bit of darkness in our heart. And that, 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 that light shines within us in the heart. And that, that, that Iman and that Nur and that light, it reflects. Subhanallah. It removes everything that is dark and sins, it's darkness. Wrongdoings, it's darkness. It transforms the entire individual to think differently, to see things differently, to speak differently, subhanAllah, and to behave differently. While another person may do any and anything, a believer thinks before he actually does something. He looks at it. He weighs it out. He analyzes what is good and what is bad. Then he says to himself, you say, you know what? At the end of the day, I am a Muslim. I am accountable to Allah. And this action is not becoming of a Muslim. I can't do that. Subhanallah. So therefore, the Prophet says, never rejoice. So yes, as I said, you know, we are human beings. At times, you may be in a little, as I say, a little knick-knack with a person, um, a little close talk, you know, temporarily, as I said, you may have a, some dispute and argument because of which you, you, you are upset, you are not talking. That does not mean at all that you rejoice and be, become happy when that person is in problem. You know, if he becomes sick, you're happy. You know, if he dies, you say, Alhamdulillah, na'uzubillah, you know, Muslim passes away. Because you are vexed with him, as we say, you know, a little bit of Trinity talk. You vex with him, oh, you say, Alhamdulillah, he passed away. One day you will die also. Would somebody say the same thing about you? No. We must always think about it before we do. Do not, we must never do that, my dear beloved brothers and sisters. Never, ever rejoice at the misfortune of other people. You know, your brother Less, what, what may happen? If you want to be happy that he's suffering, you want to be happy, happy that some misfortune has come over him, Allah is seeing that. Allah may put that same thing over you and grant him relief from that. Allah will remove it from him, grant him relief, and then it will come upon you, and then you will learn a lesson. So this is a very be beautiful tradition. Take, we must pay attention to these blessed words, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I see it's time for our break today. So we'll take a short break and inshallah we'll come back after the break with the tafsir. <laughs> لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك Do you want a reliable gate? Reeb is reliable. Authorized dealer Andes General Services Limited specializes in automatic slide and swing gates, barriers, garage doors, roll-up doors and grills. Distributors for Clope and Liftmaster. With over 33 years experience, we offer high quality products backed by guaranteed parts and service. Andes General Services Limited, 658-7863. Faz Meats and Poultry for fresh locally processed chicken, farm-grown roasted duck, smoked beef and lamb. Enjoy our famous locally grown smoked and regular turkey. Call or visit Faz Meats and Poultry, 21 Market Street next to Marabella Market. Phone 
healthy and stay positive with All Snacks Omega-3. Enjoy almonds filled with vitamin E, healthy fats and fiber. Walnuts may decrease bad cholesterol, lower blood pressure and provide diabetic support. Amp up your vitamin B1 with pecans. Pumpkin seeds are rich in iron, protein and zinc. Dried cranberries are an antioxidant, heart-healthy superfood. Boost your immunity with Omega-3 Mix. All Snacks, a healthier choice. Sonas, a name significant over many years in upholstering, whether it's automotive, marine, household or office. At Sonas Upholstering Center, our in-house team of experts can create a design using the best, highly durable and attractive material to gain your confidence and approval for a finished job, leaving customers and staff equally satisfied. Call or come and visit Sonas Upholstering Center, 61 Montrose Main Road, Shagwanas or phone 665-4556. Welcome again to our tafsir and the commentary of the Holy Quran, which we have started. So the last thing we discussed was the, and we expounded on, was the beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The shara and the commentary of that same ayah goes further. It states, after prohibiting the believers from mocking one another, because Allah says, "O you who believe, let not a group scoff at another group." So after. Given that instruction, Allah says, it may be that the latter are better than the former. It means that it is possible that those who are mocked or laughed at are more honored and superior in Allah's sight than the mockers. They may be more beloved and dearer to Allah than those who mock them. As such, a believer must not mock or laugh at another believer since no one knows the status, the rank a, a believer has in the sight of Allah. Very beautiful part of the commentary here which has been given by all the commentators of the Holy Quran. Allah says, it may be and it is highly possible that those you are mocking at, they are far better than you. Why mock them? Oh, what, what do you know of their rank in the sight of Allah? Suppose they are more mahboob, more beloved to Allah. Suppose they are very great in the sight of Allah. Suppose they have a special rank in the sight of Allah, which you do not know. How can you know that? You know, these things are not visible to you. You can't see uh, signs on the external self to say that. But you don't know. You are mocking them because you think yourself to be better than them. But in Allah's sight, they can be far better than, you, better than you. They are superior and they are more. They are actually far better than you. So therefore, when you do not know their true value and rank in the sight of Allah, then it is unbecoming of you as an individual or it is unbecoming of any believer to mock another believer. So this teaches us that when we see people, whether they look old, they look religious to us, sometimes, you know, there is a natural tendency to look down upon other people. If you see, you know, people, they are going to the masjid regularly, you say, oh, look at them, look at them. You know, you see people are dressing with Islamic garb. You know, you, you type of feel within you, oh, look at them. They're trying to do this, they're trying to play this, they're trying to play pious, they're trying to play. You know, this is a kind of mockery. At first, it enters the mind. Your mind processes those thoughts and then it comes out on your tongue. You may say to somebody else or say to yourself or think that way, you know. So when you don't know their status and rank in the sight of Allah and you don't even know your own status, don't mock another person. Put them down, laugh at them. Allah says, because it's highly possible that those you are mocking, they are far better than you, greater than in Allah's sight. But even at times they are greater in the sight of people than you. <laughs> Subhanallah, other people will love them because of their humility, because of their simplicity, because of the way they conduct themselves. People are, are actually attracted to them because of their conduct, their beautiful conduct. So even right here on the face of the earth, they are more beloved to people than you 
and yet you put them down and mock them. Allah says, no. He says, it may be that the latter are better than the former. Allah further states in the, the above verse, nor let some woman scoff at other women. Nor let some woman scoff at other women. So the general uh, teaching that came before was about all believers, but specifically mention was made about women. Having given, as it state, states, as it states here, having given the general prohibition to all believers at the beginning of the verse, where Allah says, "Ya ayyuhalladina amanu la yaskhara qawmun min qawmin." That's general. Here, Allah now gives a direct instruction to women, and specifically, He says, "Wala nisa ummin nisa." No, let some women scoff and laugh at other women, that they must not mock scoff, make fun of, or laugh at other women. So women should never get themselves involved in that. To look down upon, you know, sometimes women might be, you know, are wrong with themselves and another person pass and somebody looks at the way that woman is, a woman has dressed and somebody may say from among them, oh, look how she has dressed, look how she looks, you know, who she thinks she is. You know, it's something that, that goes wrong. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made special mention to women as a special command instruction. Allah says, no, this is on becoming of you as a Muslim woman, as a believer in Allah, to look down upon others, to mock other people or to make fun of them. You must never do that. That is what Allah is saying. So if we are doing that, we must stop it because we will be disobeying Allah if we continue. He then states that it may be that these women who are mocked at are far better than the women who mock them, subhanAllah. Far better that you are mocking them. They, they are not really taking you on because they can't hear you and they are going about their business. And here is it that you talk about them, you gossip about them, you are picking out faults in them, putting them down, saying things to make other people laugh at them. And they are not bothered about you. But in the sight of Allah, because they are not involved in what you are doing, they don't get sin. But you are involved in doing something haram, you will keep on getting sin and more and more sin the more you do it. So in the end, who is better than who? That's it. These people, they are innocent. They are ghafilat. As the Quran speaks about believing women, they are ghafilat, mu'minat. They are believing women, but they are unmindful of what you are doing to them. So then they don't do it back. So when they meet you, they meet you with a good face, with a clean heart because they don't know what you're doing. But when you meet them, it's a type of hypocrisy because now when you meet them, you have to smile with them like if everything is okay. But you know what you have been doing before. You know, why not tell them what you, what you were doing? Why not be clear to them? Be, be tr truthful to them. But nobody will do that because people like to hide their sins and wrongdoings. But these things are not good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا نِسَاءٌ مِّن نِسَاءٍ he says, no, woman, you must not do that. All believers, you must never do it. Scoff at, look at, put down a person, look at them with an inferior eye, make, uh, make them a laughing stock, say things intentionally to make other people laugh at them, to get a little laugh by lying, by actually attacking the honor of another person. No, that's wrong. Allah says, it's true. Perhaps. These people who are being mocked, they are far better than those who are mocking them. Therefore, those who mock others from among men or women must give consideration to what Allah has stated and refrain from mocking others. SubhanAllah. Verse 11 further states, Allah says, وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Which means, nor defame one another, nor insult one another by nicknames, nor defame one another, you ought not to defame one another, and do not insult one another by calling, calling each other names that are offensive. That is what it means. This is the second prohibition which Allah has given to the believers. And he orders them to refrain from defaming one another. Defaming you know, to dishonor them, to, to bring a bad reputation against them, to slander them, to backbite them, to lie about them or against them. But the words, it's, it's much deeper than the word defaming. It's much more than defamation, you know, to another person. 
This is why it states here the verse in Arabic states, Wala tal mizu an fusakum. That is what Allah says. Wala tal mizu an fusakum. The translation, transliteration is mentioned here. Wala tal mizu an fusakum, which is translated as what? And do not defame yourselves. Because when you do something uh, to another person and Allah has joined you into one brotherhood, it's like you are doing it to your own self because this person is your brother. <coughs> So in the Arabic language, the word Talmizu, because Allah says, Wala Talmizu, La is just nafia, it's a, a word a negate, you know, a word that negates. So the word the, the is there is uh, Talmizu, it comes from the word Alams. It comes from the word Alams, which means it's not, it does just not does not mean defame. The word Alams, it means to speak ill of someone, to find fault in someone to criticize someone, to blame someone, and to defame. That is what the word alams mean. And Allah says, Wala tell me zu. So therefore, the real message and meaning of the above part of the verse is that, that the, what's the real meaning that Allah is conveying to us? One, a believer must not ill speak. A believer must not, must not speak ill of another believer. A believer must not speak ill of another believer. Why would you speak ill when it is haram? The other thing, a believer must not find faults or pick out or search for faults in another believer. That's not of your business. <coughs> Why are you searching for faults in the person, digging out the faults, spying on him to see what he's involved in? No, don't do that. That's what I tell him he's one full has that meaning? A believer must not criticize and censure another believer. No. Do not criticize, condemn, and censure another believer. And a believer must not blame another believer wrongfully. To make up things, to wrongfully place blame on a person, this is not permissible at all. And fifth, a believer must not harm the reputation of another believer through false statements, accusations, and slander, etc., this amounts to defamation of character, which is totally haram in Islam. So all these different, uh, actually, explanations there, five, they are all direct meaning of that word, wala talmizu an fusakum. They are not just interpretation, or a commentary of, or an explanation, they actually are the direct meaning and message of the word la talmizu. So when Allah tells us wala talmizu an fusakum in the translation of the Quran one word is used there defame defamation of character but it includes all all the different things the, all the commentators have said wala ya'ib ba'dukum ba'dha some of you must not pick out the faults and find faults or search for the faults in another person and to take out what are the defects of the person no, so therefore, it means la talmizu and fusakum. Do do not speak ill of each other. Believers must understand. Don't don't go about speaking ill of each other. If you go about speaking ill of each other, how can you have unity? With what face will you meet each other? With what heart will you meet each other? If you know, just a few minutes ago you were speaking ill of this person, and this person comes to meet you like a brother. You say, Assalamu alaikum, brother. You say, Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam with a smiling face. And, and just before you were speaking ill of this, this is hypocrisy, isn't that so? So, therefore, the way to unity and harmony, as Allah says in the ayah we discussed last week, ikhwa. Allah says, ikhwa. that all believers, they are brothers. So therefore, how to maintain this brotherhood? La talmizu an fusakum. Don't speak ill of each other. You will maintain that unity and brotherhood. Also, do not go about looking for faults and finding faults in your believing brothers and sisters. Then if you do that, Allah will put other people to look for your faults. And if you reveal their faults, Allah himself will reveal your faults and humiliate you. So la talmizu an fusakum has that meaning. And to criticize, why are you criticizing and condemning another person, censuring another person? It's not permissible at all. It says, and blaming another person wrongfully, to lay blame, to, and to put blame on another person. And it's wrong. 
a person may have not have done something or said something, the person is not guilty of something, but wrongfully you are blaming the person. It's not permissible. And then to do something to harm the reputation of the person. You slander the person. You falsely accuse the person. You lay false allegations. You have not investigated something. You heard something about a person and you say you are saying it. A person brings something to your ear and you begin to actually speak about it. And everything that comes to your ears, you are speaking about it. Everything that comes to your knowledge about anybody, anyone, you are speaking about it. This is totally wrong. Remember in the beginning of Surah Al-Hujrat, Allah says, information that comes to you from someone who is not well informed about it or not reliably and trustworthy, then you must investigate to see if it is correct or wrong. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kafabil mar'i kathiba, ayyuhadditha bi kulli ma samia. It is sufficient for a man to be termed a liar <coughs> for him to narrate everything he hears. It is sufficient for a man to be called a liar. Yani sufficient for a person to be called a liar who narrates everything he hears or she hears. So therefore what it tells us, if every time you hear something about someone and you go about narrating it without verifying it, then you can be called a kathab, a liar in the sight of Allah and you will be punished for lying. So everything you hear, you will actually say. You wouldn't verify it. Uh, suppose it's wrong and a lot of things are wrong. And you go about, and the one you say you said it to, or the one you say it to, that person will become like you and say it to another person. <coughs> and then that person to whom it was said will say it to another person. And in a very short space, 25, 30, 40 people will hear the same thing about a person, and it's all wrong. Everybody they will be guilty of lying in the sight of Allah, and they have committed a grave sin, subhanAllah. So therefore you are doing what? You are causing harm and damaging the character and the reputation of a person. Allah says, وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not do that. Do not defame each other and do not actually tarnish the character of a person. Subhanallah. While explaining the above verse, Hafiz ibn Kathir writes, Nor defame yourselves. That's the translation of the ayah. He says it means that Allah has forbidden the believers from defaming one another. He among men who is a slanderer and a backbiter is cursed and condemned. Mazmum wa mal'oon. He's mazmum and mal'oon. Yani he's cursed by Allah and condemned also by Allah. Whoever is a slanderer and whoever is someone who backbites other people. About them, Allah says, Wailulli kulli humazatil lumaza. You know, it's a part of the surah, the surah we all know, many of us know. Wailulli kulli humazati lumaza. Two words are used there. Humaza and lumaza. So it's called surah al-humaza. Which means, woe to every humaza and lumaza. And humaza means slanderer and lumaza means backbiter. So in this ayah, Allah has condemned <coughs> And cursed anyone who slanders and anyone who backbites. So Hafiz ibn Kathir also did a tashri of the word. He says, the word humaza used in that. Wailulli kulli humaza lumaza. Humaza is from the word al-hams with the small ha. Ha mim and za. Hams, al-hams. And al-hams, what is al-hams? It is defamation by action that you do something. Even a gesture you give with your body, with your eye you give, you know, or your shoulder. You, it's some gesture or sign that you did to actually defame somebody. That is humaza. And lumaza is from the word alams, which is defamation by words. Now, when you use your speech to defame others, it is called lumaza or alams in the Holy Quran. So Allah has condemned those people who uh, actually cause harm to the reputation of other people by actions or through words and speech. While speaking about the transgressor and sinful person, that's in the Quran, Allah says, 
Who is a sinful person? He is a defamer. He is Hamaz. Going about with slander. As mentioned in Surah Al-Qalam. Surah Al-Qalam. It means that the sinner is one who belittles people and defames them. Spreading slander among them. What does the sinner do? He belittles people and defames them. Slandering them. And then spreading slander among them, as is mentioned by Hafiz ibn Kathir. So he just gave a little explanation on that. While warning the believers about seeking the faults of others, the Prophet wasallam is reported to have said, the one who seeks the faults of his Muslim brother, Allah will reveal his faults. And the one whose fault Allah makes apparent, he shall be disgraced even if he sits at home. Hadith recorded by Imam Tirmizi, subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, said, one who seeks the faults of his Muslim brother, that you are going about looking for the faults. Hmm? You are going after looking at his faults to bring it out, to let people know. Well, when you do that for another Muslim, Allah will seek your faults and bring out your faults also. You seek the faults of other people, your Muslim brothers or sisters, Allah will seek your faults. And the one whose fault Allah makes apparent. So when Allah seeks your faults, he will reveal your faults. And when Allah reveals your faults, then Allah will cause humiliation and disgrace to come to you. Yani that person will be disgraced even if he sits in the home. The person wouldn't have to come out to be disgraced or belittled or humiliated. The person doesn't have to mix with people and interact with people for people to actually humiliate him. While sitting at home, people will learn about his faults. People will learn about his wrongdoings because Allah is actually ma making it known to people one way or the other. And while he's all alone, sitting at his home in total privacy and in seclusion, he will be humiliated and disgraced right there. That comes about when the individual, he goes about seeking the faults of other people. When he goes about seeking the faults of other people, that is, what Allah, that is what exactly what Allah is going to do to him. In another tradition, subhanallah, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala narrates that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one of you sees the speck in his brother's eye while he forgets and he leaves alone the log in his own eye. Subhanallah, what a beautiful tradition as mentioned by in the Sahih of Ibn Hibban. He said, one of you sees the speck in his brother's eye, but he ignores the log in his own eye. In other words, there is a big log in his eye. He doesn't see it because he doesn't want to see it, but he's seen a small little <coughs> dot in your eye, a speck on your eye. That's what he's seen. In other words, what it's speaking about? People, they are always, uh, they are always ready to look at the faults in other people and they turn a blind eye to their own faults. As uh, the hadith says, as we, uh, we have mentioned here, the understanding of this hadith is that it is quite common. The word is common. Common. The word, it is quite common among people to seek the faults of others, but they are totally unmindful of their own. They also become very interested in correcting the faults of others but are disinterested in rectifying their own. They are always concerned about the faults of others and what they are doing and, and all these things, but they are forgetting about their own selves. Thus, as it's stated, thus if a person keeps his eyes on his own faults and shortcomings, <coughs> he will find no time to seek out the faults of others. In fact, when a person is attentive to his own faults, it brings goodness to him. Regarding this, the pious scholars, of the past have stated from the good fortune and happiness of a person is that he becomes occupied with correcting his own faults rather than looking at the faults of others. If you use that time to correct your own self, correct your faults and whatever things you need to correct, you use that valuable time to correct your own fault, you will become a better person. You will change yourself. You will be happy with your own self. But if you don't do that, you will become so preoccupied in seeking the faults of others, looking at what they do and what they don't do, and trying to 
go behind them to correct it in a bad manner. And all the time, your faults are building higher and higher and people are looking at that, but you are not bothered about that. The scholars have further explained that one should not disclose physical defects of another person since this may amount to fault fight fault finding which is prohibited. Somebody has some physical defect and you go about talking about it. You go about publicizing it. You go about telling other people about it. This is seeking the faults of other people. It doesn't concern you, leave it alone. People have physical defects, leave it alone. You know, if you have to give them a good advice, then give them a good advice. But to carry it to other people, to publicize it, to speak about it, it means that you are finding faults in people which which actually is totally haram. Another thing that is totally prohibited, imitating other people with certain handicaps to highlight these as defects is also totally prohibited. Let's go over that again. It says imitating other people with certain handicaps to highlight these as defects is also totally prohibited. Sometimes you see a person who has some sort of defect or his handicap and that person is walking in a certain way. Now you want to copy that person and imitate that person to other people just to get a laugh from them. You are imitating that person not because you are walking like that, but to show them how so-and-so is walking just to, what? Make fun of the person. This is totally wrong, totally haram. You know, a person speaks in a certain way because that is a defect in him. And you begin to speak in that way, whether it's a whether stammer or stutter, you begin to speak in that way. And what's your purpose? Just to highlight the defect in that person, taking out the fault of that person, you know. And everything like that, the, the purpose is that whatever the person is handicapped with, whatever defect the person may have in his body, in his movement, in his speech, in his, in his walk or anything, you want to imitate and copy that just to show other people this is totally haram and not permissible. You know, uh, we have to be very, very careful about that lest Allah may put that situation over us because of what that a person may do. So it's time for us to stop, inshallah. So uh, we'll continue next week, but we'll stop right there. And inshallah, we'll continue with the other parts of this ayah, very beautiful ayah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to correct our action. May he make our islah for us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength of iman and the tawfiq, divine aid and assistance to practice upon these beautiful injunctions and instructions which he has given to us. So until we see and we meet again next week, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته